Thank you very much, Congresswoman Kim and Congressman uh, uh, Mills. And uh, just grateful. And we now proceed to Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you to our witnesses for being here. Um, you know, I know we've had many conversations in classified settings where we've talked about the military operations on the ground as someone uh, who's Jewish with family living in Israel. This is deeply personal to me, and my heart breaks for every Palestinian child who uh, is being killed in this conflict through no fault of their own. Um, I know one of the things that President Biden has emphasized was the lessons that we learned in our own experience after September 11th. You know, I was in middle school, um, and we're still dealing with the consequences that we both, this body and the United States in general, made uh, after that attack. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I think was a key lesson learned was that minimizing civilian harm is incredibly important in the fight against violent extremism. Um, so I was wondering if, if you could share what some of the specific lessons learned in our own fight against terrorism um, that are useful in this situation now and that we've conveyed to the Israeli government. Thank you, Congresswoman, for those, for those questions. Uh, Secretary Austin speaks uh, about lessons learned from the past two decades of the United States military experience. A key lesson is that there is a continuous and consistent need to attend to the needs of the civilian population in order for military gains to be sustainable. I would just add that, you know, that uh, the first trip that Secretary Blinken and I and, and the rest of his team made to Israel uh, fell four or five days after the massacre. And I can only uh, say that the both the, the, but the leadership, the the country, uh, more broadly, but the leadership was in a state of shock, um, and and deep trauma, and that trauma is still there. Um, I think uh, part of what we have seen uh, our job to be, both on the civilian side and the military side, is uh, is to be uh, a strong shoulder to lean on and help a uh, nation in trauma and shock and its leadership move through that um, as they made um, decisions about uh, the military campaign and so forth. So there's been a good, robust soldier-to-soldier uh, -soldier discussion about this. And of course, um, our, our own leadership is engaged in that. Um, but the, the, the president spoke from his heart when he said that. And he spoke as a friend um, that learned from us because we did make uh, some very um, grave uh, decisions, uh, grave mistakes rather. Uh, early on and through that continuous fight against, um, uh, you know, the terrorist uh, scourge that come to our shores. Well, thank you. And I know the Israelis themselves have openly said that many of the uh, provisions we've seen around food and water and humanitarian assistance have been directly because of the advocacy of the U.S. government. So I thank you for, for all of your tireless work on that. And I, I know that Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that he is not willing to do a humanitarian pause, and I appreciate all of the work you all have been doing to, to continue encouraging him to make sure that we are able to get that uh, assistance. I want to move to our, our U.S. forces in the region. Um, obviously, we've repositioned significant military resources to deter this from uh, expanding, uh, and especially from Hezbollah and Iran from further intervening. Um, can you commit to us that you will come to Congress before conducting combat operations or other hostilities against a belligerent in this unfolding conflict, especially any hostilities that could escalate? If, if Congresswoman, you are referencing anything other than the self-defense strikes that President Biden has under ordered under his Article II authority, yes, we would consult with Congress. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and lastly, uh, I want to ask, um, there's been public reporting uh, about uh, the U.S. approving the sale of uh, military-style weapons for the Israeli National Police. Uh, the Israeli National Police obviously are under the purview of uh, Minister Ben Gavir, one of the far-right extremists. Um, we've also uh, seen concerns that some of those weapons, in addition to being used by the National Police themselves in ways that are um, probably not necessarily aligned with what we would want uh, policing to be, also have been given directly to settlers who are engaging in settler violence. What assurances can you give us about whether or not those weapons are actually being approved and uh, whether or not um, they will be used for things that I think we all would agree uh, we don't approve of? 
Thank you. Um, Congressman, thank you for that. Um, in all of these cases, we have um, been provided assurances um, and we have rigorous oversight or end use uh, uh, monitoring for all of this. Uh, there were uh, wep uh, weapons that will be provided to what are called community immediate response teams, CERT, that report directly to regional police or border patro uh, patrol commanders. They will and they supervise the use of those and those uh, and and to the personnel who are volunteers for these organizations and it is only within green line uh, israel but we have a, a, an elaborate set of assurances on that so these times expired uh